Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Right side, let's go this way. Yeah, it looks like cluster. The butterflies are sitting like honey, honey bees comb. So this attraction is open from November to February. That's the season of for butterfly. And if you guys are driving in the highways for the see a one drive you can come stop by for just 10 to 15 minutes and it's a good attraction it's a free attraction you can smell the you have to smell also the tree smell it's really good <laughs> yeah. so, so they they come they come down here and they stay here till the middle of February. Now, what do the adults eat? Nectar. Nectar. Are there many flowering plants this time of the year? No. Not too many. Okay. And even though there there are sometimes a lot of flowers, they're not producing a lot of nectar. So before they started their migration down. They became celibate. Meaning? Yeah, they go into what's called sexual diapause because, oh, okay. because reproduction takes up a lot of energy. Yeah. And so they feed, they built, 
they, they eat, they eat, they eat, but since they're not reproducing, they get fat. And you can actually see a fat monarch butterfly and a skinny monarch butterfly because they need that fat to, to survive. And they come down here because the temperature, the microclimate is about right. If it's too hot and they're fluttering around all day, they use up their fat. If it's too cold, they can't survive. Okay, so this is just what we call the Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold. Not too cold. <laughs> And they need a place where it's sheltered, so it's not windy. Uh -huh. Okay, and so they're looking for a grove, one that has a, what we call an intact canopy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of the um, eucalyptus trees are getting old and dying, and the canopies are not protecting them mm -hmm. as much either. So they come down here and they're hanging out, and then in February, when the temperatures start getting warmer days are getting longer, they say, all right, time to, go back. Now, time to reproduce. Okay. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> and so they're all mating, okay, the males go off and die. Mm. The females go off into the central valley where, they, where they're looking for, what do the caterpillars eat? Leaves. Leaves. Leaves? What kind of leaves? Milkweed. <laughs> Milkweed. <laughs> okay, they look they only want one kind of plant, milkweed. Okay, they'll lay their eggs, two to three hundred eggs, and then the females die. So that's the end of that generation. They hatch, they're a caterpillar for two weeks, they be, go into their the larval, uh, stage. larval stage, the, the caterpillar, and they pupate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they emerge as the butterfly and they only live for two weeks or so. So they'll, their lifespan is four to six, maybe eight weeks. And what they do is they keep going up further north. So two or three generations, they'll go north, uh -huh. okay, looking for the milkweed as it emerges as the season comes by, looking for the flowering plants to eat as an adult, adult and they're reproducing. So, so that generation and two or three more only live four, six, eight weeks, okay? Then when they get north and the days are getting short again, they come down. Those guys live four to six months. So they're our super generation, okay? Wow. <laughs> so, very, very elaborate. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of interesting, and they all seem to find their way back down here uh -huh. again. And how they do that is a mystery because none of them have ever been here before. Ah, I always used to think, how come this? I thought the, the, it, these, are the, these are the same butterflies coming out. No, <laughs> okay. no. These now are, I know. All of these are the great, great, great grandchildren ah. of the ones that left here in February. Oh my, okay. Okay, so these guys have never been here mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and once they do their thing in February, mm -hmm. you know, they'll maybe go five, 10 miles mm -hmm. away from here. They're finished too. Oh. <laughs> so they'll never come back again. Mm -hmm. it, uh, they'll come out with binoculars, you know, so you have a circle, and they'll, they'll count. Okay, in there, there's 20 of them. And then, Basically, they'll just go 20, you know, if there, if there was a whole bunch of, they would just go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, okay? And I would count, my, I do, it's a good estimate. Okay. So I would count, you would count, she would count, she would count, and then we'll average it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry? Yeah. So, so they'll come out early in the morning because remember, if it's below 55 degrees, they're not flying around. Okay, so they're all going to be in the clusters. If you go back around, there's still some clusters where they're all, you know, 100, 200, 300 of them all grouped yeah. together. So that's easier to count, you know, because this guy's flying over there, that one's flying, you know, you'd never be able to keep track of them. Okay. Yeah, they can't they can do some verification if they take photographs they could blow them up and then they could say you know 
Okay. 253 and you estimated how many in this cluster? You know, we could we could kind of validate that. But that's it, that's very time consuming. Okay, so they're supposed to wait until February. <laughs> so one of the reasons that the butterfly counts have gone down is partially because of climate change. You know, where their cycle and the cycles of when the flowers are emerging and, and blooming and stuff like that are getting out of sync. Mm. Okay, so actually back uh, a couple of years ago, we had a really warm January. They all said, oh, time to do our February thing. Mm -hmm. Our draw was right around Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They did that, the females flew into the, the Central weed. Valley yeah. looking for the milkweed. Milk okay, and then we got hit Mm -hmm. the late January mm -hmm. storm. And we think that that killed a lot of them. And the next year we had a big drop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this climate change is, is having an effect as well as, you know, all the fires and stuff. You know, you know, we don't know how well they can survive, you know, flying through the, through, through the smoke and stuff. Plus, if there was any any eggs or larvae or chrysalises, you know, there in that area that burned, they're, they're, they're gone. <laughs>